In today's video, I am showing some advanced macro lighting and focus stacking techniques that you can practice at home to get shots just like this. So I'm in my studio today and I wanted to take a cool shot of this. This is my new ring and I thought it looked pretty cool so I wanted to take a photo, but it's also pretty small. So taking that photo is going to involve leaning on a lot of my macro skills. It's going to involve that close focusing, it's going to involve lighting, probably with multiple lights, and it's probably going to involve some focus stacking in Photoshop as well. And sure, it's not a mushroom or a leaf or a bit of tree or an insect or something out in the natural world like some of my other macro videos, but we'll be using the exact same principles to take these photos. So if you are keen to expand your skills in macro photography, then doing these setups at home like this is a really easy way of practicing. Okay, so let's actually take a look at the scene that I've set up. The ring has this quite raw, hammered metal effect, which I love, and I wanted to set up a scene that really complements it. So I'm positioning it, as you can see, on this piece of slate which I found, and I think that's got some really beautiful texture, which I think is gonna complement the ring well. But as you can see as well, rather than just lay it flat on the piece of slate itself, I've tried to create something a little bit more visually interesting. So I've actually strung it up with this piece of fishing wire here, just to allow me to balance the ring on the edge, on this like jaggedy side to the slate. And I just think this is gonna make it a much more interesting shot overall. But still by itself, it might not be the most exciting of scenes. And that is where the lighting comes in. I've shown in my macro videos before the importance of lighting and how crafting that light can completely change the mood. And that is exactly what I'm gonna be relying on here to get that sort of dramatic moodiness that I really want for this ring. So I'm gonna be using two lights here. We've got one just over there on the table. That is a Godox AD200. And on the front of it, I've put a, um, a Magmod Snoot. Now that's just a basically a cone that narrows the beam of light rather than just letting it spread everywhere. Now that is just a light for the background. It's gonna fire at the background, in this case, just the painted gray wall of my studio to create a small pool of light that's gonna appear behind the ring. The second light is another AD200, this time in a big softbox, casting a lovely soft light over the ring and over the slate itself. Both of which will be triggered and controlled by the Godox trigger on top of my camera. So once they're in position and all lined up, all I need to do is fiddle with the settings on here. Speaking of settings, let's actually take a look at what I've got. I'm gonna turn this trigger off for a moment. Whenever I take shots in studio, whether it's product, whether it's macro, whether it's portraits, anything like that, I wanna start off with a completely black frame. Let's just see if we've got that, take the shot. Yep, entirely black frame, perfect. Now that's really important because I wanna make sure that when I turn these lights on, that I know that every bit of light I can see when I take a photo is light that I have put there. If I put it there, I can control it. It's not being affected by this big video light, this massive window, no, only the light that I want in that image will be visible. Now I'm shooting this at F13, ISO 100, that's the lowest ISO this camera can go to, and shutter speed of 160th of a second. F13 is gonna give me a really deep depth of field, hopefully allowing me to get as much of the ring in focus as possible. That said, if we zoom in, we can very clearly see that while the front of the ring is nice and in focus, the back is not. So we're definitely gonna have to do a little bit of focus stacking to make sure that that whole ring is in focus. If I just change that focus then, Oh, you can see crafted in Sheffield in the back. So yeah, we'll definitely wanna make sure that we're getting both sides nice and in focus. Okay, but let's start by turning on this background light and we're gonna take a quick test shot. Okay, I mean, positioning, it's actually pretty good. Um, it's definitely casting a nice pool of light around the ring itself. You can see on the back of camera that we've got this lovely uh, silhouette of the ring, so that's fine. Obviously it is far too dark though, so that's easily fixed. I'm just gonna turn it up. I always use my lights in manual mode, then I can adjust the power to taste. It's on 32 right now. I'm gonna take it up about two stops, and we're gonna take that same shot again. 
There we go. Now we've got a much nicer light coming in from that background. By turning the lights on one at a time, it means you get to craft this light independently of all the other lights. So I know that this is only the background light here. It's not being affected by any of the other lights we might put in. So always work one at a time. Okay, turn on our main light. Let's give this a try. Okay, it's definitely too dark but you can already see that it is sort of just casting this nice light on the side of the ring. I like the angle as well. It's really emphasizing the shadows caused by that hammered effect on the ring. And I think it's also gonna look nice on the slate as well. But it definitely needs to turn, be turned up quite a bit. So let's go into this, up that to quarter power. Just checking my focus, manually focusing every time right on the front of that ring. Yep, that looks good. Take the shot. That's looking much better already. Really like what that's doing. If we just zoom in, you can see that we've got loads of detail on the slate, the way that the different textures um, is, is catching the light. It's really bringing out these lines, which I think is great because they almost act as leading lines pointing up towards the ring itself. Um, now that ring is looking really, really good. Again, love that we've got that pattern really being brought out by the light around here. But as you can see this side, it's fallen almost completely to black, which is a shame. Thankfully though, that should be a pretty easy problem to fix with this piece of paper. So at the moment, because we've got the light coming in from this side, it's hitting just the left side of the ring, not the right. That is why this side is lit and this side falls into darkness. But with this piece of paper, what I'm gonna do is just try holding it up here. And this white uh, sheet will catch the light from this light here and will just reflect some of it back up into the light. It won't be as powerful, it won't look like I've got a second light, but it will be just enough to stop it falling into complete darkness. At least that's the idea. Okay, so let's do that again. Exactly the same settings as before. Yep, it's looking good. But this time it's gonna hold that paper in. It's not in my shot. The difference that has made is absolutely huge. You can see now we've got this lovely reflected light back in. I actually think that already looks really good. So I'm not gonna take any more shots um, of the face of the ring itself. But what I have noticed is that it's reflecting a little bit too much light back into the slate. I want that slate to keep those shadows. That's what's defining the pattern on it. And that's something that's worth keeping in mind if you are outside shooting natural subjects. Do you want to light everything up or do you wanna keep some of that shadow, keep some of that contrast in there? So what I'm probably gonna do is when I load these photos into Photoshop is I'll blend in the light for the ring, but I won't put it in on the slate. So we keep that shadows, but actually have a well lit product. The last thing I need to do here though, is get the shot of the back of the ring. And I really want that made in Sheffield um, uh, engraving to really light up this shot from a company called Flynn and Steel. They are based in Sheffield. I'm from Sheffield. Uh, that's kind of why I bought the ring. I will just say, they don't know I'm doing this video. There's no sponsorship or money changing hands. I just bought the ring. I thought it was cool. Um, but I, because it's from Sheffield, that's kind of the point of it. That's certainly why I bought it, as I say. So I want that to stand out. I want that to be in the photo. And it should be fairly easy to do. At least I'm hoping so. I'm actually gonna do it with another light, um, another AD200, just this one here. But you can do this with just uh, using one of the other lights. You don't need a third light because I'm actually gonna turn off the first two, just like this. So only this light will be triggered. And as you can see on the front of this, I've just got a little collapsible softbox. You may have seen me use this in other macro videos. It's great, it's really, really small softbox, but we're shooting a very, very small subject as is usually the case with macro. So you don't need a big light in order to fully cover it. You don't really need something this size. It's just what I've got in my studio. So that's what I'm using. First of all, actually go and get our focus on the back of the ring. There we go. Crafted in Sheffield is there. So now we've got our focus on the back of that bit of the ring. What I wanna do with this light is just hold it overhead and fire it down. And I just need the light to fire down and just catch up the lettering. I don't need it to light the ring. We've lit the ring already with this and with the background. All we wanna do 
is just light up that lettering. So I'm just gonna take a quick shot, see what it looks like. And if we have a zoom in, we can see absolutely that crafted in Sheffield has lit up beautifully. I have just turned the background light on though, just so um, it kind of helps carve out the shape of the ring um, in that kind of silhouette way we saw earlier. So let's just take this shot again, I'm holding the light just by hand, crafted in Sheffield. That's very visible, that looks great. I'm really pleased with how that looks. So there should be all the shots that I need, so I'm gonna take those over, stack them up in Photoshop, and show you how we put together a shot like this. Okay, so I've come over into Lightroom, I've selected the shots that we need. This is the one with just the light coming in from the left. I love what it's doing with these lines on the slate. This then is when I brought in that piece of paper just to reflect that light back in. And look at the difference it makes, it is huge. But as I said, I don't like that it's adding in a lot more light to that slate. So we're gonna paint that in separately. Finally then, we've got the one when we focused on Crafted in Sheffield. So we've got everything we need. I'm gonna select those three, right click and edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. Okay, all the layers are now stacked up. First thing I'm gonna do is select all of them and go to Edit Auto Align Layers because, you know, the camera will have shifted slightly, maybe when you're doing the focus. So just aligning them up is a great way of starting off. And now if we just turn things off, you can see that everything should be nicely aligned. Now it should be fairly easy to kind of turn those lights back on. So all I'm gonna do is click on this and then we're gonna click here to make a layer mask and I'm gonna invert it by pressing Control or Command I, that's gonna fill it with black. So now, when I take out the brush tool and I'm painting with white and turn up the flow to maybe 10%, 8%-ish, as I paint in, you can see, <gasps> magic, it just paints in the layer that we've hidden. So we can do that off and on. And look, we've now brought in that light without it affecting, if we just turn that layer off, look, we don't want that. We wanted to keep that drama, keep that shadow on the slate. And so we've done that, but we've been able to bring in that other side of the ring. Turn that off and on, off and on. You can see the difference it's made there. So there we go. We're most of the way there, we've brought in that second light and we've still got that lovely drama um, on the rock itself. So the next thing I need to do then is bring in that crafted in Sheffield. Now, I think we are gonna have some issues here. One, it isn't lined up properly. I don't think, it doesn't quite look like it's gonna be, so I'm gonna have to shift it around slightly. Also, I think the color balance is slightly shifted. If we look, this is a lot more green than um, our previous one, and we don't want that. It should be very blue. So I'm gonna do a little bit of correction here. I'm gonna start by turning it on, and I'm gonna to go to um, a difference blending mode. Now it's just gonna let me see exactly where it is. Look at that, it's totally wrong. So now I can just move it around. But I'm just gonna draw a marquee around the ring, and then we're just gonna do this, shift it back. And so now, kind of once those outlines have disappeared, I think, I think, we should be okay. So if I go back to normal, um, get rid of that, get rid of my selection. And then again, we put another layer mask, we invert it. And then if I try and just paint that back in, you can see we're just painting in crafted in Sheffield. And so now we're in a very, very good shape with this because we brought in, let's turn these off. We started with our ring uh, like this. It's too shadowy, we're only lighting one side. So we brought in that reflection. Now we can see that amazing hammered pattern most of the way around. Still with a little bit of shadow, little bit of mood, little bit of drama, that's important. And now we've brought in that focus stacked back bit where it's pin sharp. We've got the crafted in Sheffield, which we did by bringing in that other light. So first of all, I do wanna clean these colors up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go on this layer, adjustments, hue and saturation. It's gonna start off by seeing what it's like if I just turn that saturation down. 
Bringing my saturation down does get rid of that sort of greeny color cast. This is not a green ring, it's basically a dark gray black ring, so I don't want any color in that crafted in Sheffield. So I'm going to just turn the saturation down. Clearly though, we can see that it's also affecting the background where I've painted it in um, elsewhere. So that's easy to fix though, because on this hue saturation layer, again, it's a mask. So if we invert it, turn it black, it hides all that. And then again, we get our, um, our brush and just paint in white only where we want it. Just like this. Doesn't really matter about the rest, but these reflections should be reflecting white, not green. So at this point, it's actually going to be much easier for me if I merge my layers together and I just work off one single layer. I'm not flattening the image entirely. I still want to be able to go back to those things if I need to, but just I think it's going to be easier for me to work this way um, from now on because I want to start getting rid of the uh, uh, the fishing wire. As we can see, we zoom in. You know, we've got a lot of other bits of dirt and fluff and stuff. We're going to get rid of all of that. We're going to start off by getting rid of the fishing wire very easily by using the clone stamp tool, take a selection from over here, line it up, and we just paint it. We do another, line it up, paint it away. And I'll be doing the exact same thing for the top and bottom, so why don't we skip ahead. Okay, so I pretty much removed the um, uh, fishing line from where it actually connects with the ring. Now the rest I'm going to make my life a little bit easier and I'm just going to create a selection around it, not too close to the ring. Something like this, all the way up to the top and then across, back down and I'm just going to zoom out. And then if we get the patch tool, we can just drag that selection, wrong one, patch tool, there we go, to here and tell Photoshop fill in that area with this bit of background, which it's done. If we deselect, magic, it's done it for us. So now we no longer have that fishing line in place. And how easy was that? Very, very easy. Those tools are so powerful. Um, now the ring is hovering. We've got no sign of it. But we have got a few things going on in the image. We definitely have some things to clean up. Um, there's a lot of dust, a lot of just bits of general detritus and things hanging around. Um, so I'm going to go around with the, um, uh, with the spot healing brush tool and we just click and get rid of these little bits of dust. I want this to be very, very clean. Maybe I could have polished it before, but we're going to do that now. Little tip if you are um, trying to do a lot of dust removal on dark objects in, in sort of dark and moody images. If you go to adjustments, you go to levels, and you create a really, really bright levels layer like this, you can go back in and it lights up all of those bits. If we just turn it off and on, look at how much more of those bits of dust and whatnot you can see in this thing. We can see exactly where we need to be doing this work. But because it's just an adjustment, you can just turn it off when we're done. So we're just using it so we can see what's going on a little bit more easily. It's a really, really handy little tool, that. Well, I had a little bit of a pause because my mum called me, but here we are back in. Let's take a look at what I've done. So we can see what we've done. Again, we brought in that second light, well, the reflection. Then we brought in this back bit, the Crafted in Sheffield, changed its color to get rid of that green hue. Then we merged our layer, and then we got rid of the thing. Great. Then I've done a lot of cleanup of all these kind of little bits of dust and fluff. What I've also done is I selected this uh, background color. It's pretty much black, with a little bit of blue in there. And I've actually gone around and I've kind of painted over um, a lot of this dust, just trying to neaten up some of these white lines and also try and neaten up some of these letters a little bit. If I just sort of zoom in and you can see crafted in Sheffield, there's a lot of uh, dust and sort of smeary smudges that I've had on there, which I didn't clean off. But if we just turn this on, look at that. I've just painted around it. That's just allowed it to really carve out those letters in a really nice way. We're in a really good place. So what I'm going to do is go to the top and we're going to merge that layer again. So we've got a, another good layer to work from. Let's put that on the top. Now we're going to go into our camera raw filter. This is going to bring up basically the same controls you would have in Lightroom. So now I can do things like play around with our exposure a little bit. It is a touch dark. Bring up some of those whites. 
Now the shadows, I don't really want to bring up because if we start to bring up our shadows too much, then you know we lose a little bit of that impact. So I don't want to do that. I'm going to keep our shadows pretty low actually. But I'm going to do a couple of extra little tweaks at this point. First of all, I'm going to bring in a radial gradient over the top of the ring, something like this. And I'm just going to use that to selectively increase that brightness just a little bit. Because I don't want to increase it on the rock. Again, we didn't bring in that reflection. We want to keep the rock all nice and shadowy. I think this is a good way of doing that. Okay, that's good. We're going to do another one. This time a brush. We're going to zoom right in on Crafted in Sheffield. We're going to specifically brush in some extra detail on Crafted in Sheffield. It doesn't stand out. It's a little bit too dark when you see it from a distance. So I'm going to increase the whites, increase the highlights. Also, really increase that clarity. And watch as we paint this in. How much more that pops off. You know, we can play with those whites a little bit. Look at that suddenly you can really see it. So if we ramp that up nicely like that, we can maybe just put a little bit on these reflections just so they really stand out. Suddenly, look at the difference that has made. Off and on, off and on. Huge difference. Huge. And already, I don't think there's much more that we really want to do. There's one more thing that I want to do before we go, and that is to do a little bit of dodging and burning. So I'm going to create a new layer, edit, fill, Fill it with 50% gray, and then we go to our blending modes, go to overlay. Now it's disappeared. The great thing is, is that now if we get our brush and we paint in black, it darkens the image. If you paint in white, it lightens the image. So what I want to do, go to some of these uh, the lines in the rock, and I want to paint in white because I want to lighten it. Use a brush around that sort of size. Much lower flow though, 2%. And we're just going to paint in there and you might just be able to tell as I do it's lightening up those bits we're not putting in light where it isn't it's just accent accenting what is already there just to give it an extra little kick like this zoom out a little bit and we just turn that off and on off and on look at that there may be a few more little tweaks that I do to this, but basically this is what I would do. Let's again go back to, let's turn everything off, go back to the beginning. We brought in this shot, it's quite dark, we've just got the lighting from one side. We mirrored it on the other side with that reflector, we brought in Crafted in Sheffield, we got rid of the colour, we got rid of the strings holding it up, we did this, we added in some lightness, we really brought out that Crafted in Sheffield, we use the black brush to just neaten things up a little bit. And then we did some dodging and burning just to kind of bring everything in together. So that is how I would build up a shot like this. Whether it's in macro, whether this is for a natural uh, shot of something, maybe it's in the, in the forest. Uh, more likely, these are techniques that I use in my product photography. This is a product, of course, and you want it to look its best. Um, so it is a good technique. Uh, all of these are good techniques to practice um, for this kind of photography. But that brings me to an end of today's video. I really hope you've enjoyed seeing how I would use my macro techniques to create hopefully quite a dramatic looking product image in the studio at home. As I say, if you've never tried doing these kinds of at home experiments, it is well worth it because you can learn so much about how to use macro focusing techniques, lighting, using multiple lights. And even if you don't care about taking photos of products, these are still great ways of experimenting with those techniques that you can then take out into nature, into the forest, wherever you like to take your shots and then put them to good use there. But if you have found this video helpful, do please hit that like button, consider subscribing to my channel if you don't already, and I will see you next time.